Well, hey gang, welcome back. Gonna have a quick look at MBT. We're gonna look at specifically at the BAOR module. We're gonna look at Chieftains and T62s firing at each other and seeing what happens. And what guy, I'm not a very good, uh, let's see, not a very good tutorial creator. And this is not meant to be a tutorial, more a, a look at the, the first action that's occurring so that we can uh, you know, have, a, have a squeeze at it and get a feel for it. And so let's just move the light up a little bit and explain how we got to where we are and, and then see what the actual end result is from, uh, from the specific action that has just taken place. Those of you that are wondering about the beer on the left-hand side here, it's an O'Dowd. Um, I think it's called Bull Ear or something like that. It's a barrel aged stout. Very nice. <clears throat> so, the situation is that we've got the Russians uh, moving in uh, from this side of the board, and the objective is to capture the bridges that can be seen here and a little bit further down and underneath some of this stuff. And our erstwhile British chaps from the UK are over there doing their thing. They're all hunkered down in overwatch mode, etc., etc. <coughs> and so one of the first things that we looked at was to try to ascertain a safe way for the Soviets to move onto the board and then opportunities for overwatch fire to occur shooting at these units because when they come onto the board, they're obviously not spotted. But <coughs> when they stop moving, you know, we, we, get, we, we put a, a fire move marker on them and we face the move marker forward. And then we look at the ranges and we see how far away they are. In this case, they're about 23 hexes away <coughs> from uh, potential candidates that could shoot at them. And they're in this cover here. And even though they've moved, uh, they're still not spotted or visible. Now, there are some optional uh, spotting rules. And there are some optional pieces of information on the vehicle car, uh, cards that would allow us to independently spot. Uh, and then there's also the terrain that would play into the situation. And I'm going to show you some of the terrain right now. That's just going to zoom in a little bit here. And this, this might be, uh, we'll see how long this takes, but I'll try and not make it uh, too, too tedious. So if you imagine the shot's coming from this angle and we're up on level four, which is this dark brown stuff over here. Very Russian looking, right? Uh, but uh, <coughs> kind of like the steps of Russia. But as we as we look across here, we can see we've got level four height uh, trees, level three height trees, level three height trees here. But those level three height trees are actually on level one terrain, so that makes them four high, right? So as we come into here, uh, we're at zero, one, two, three, level three. So anything behind these trees is going to be hidden. Anything up on this ridge here would be uh, visible if it, because it's in the open and it's moving, we'd probably be able to see it, so that would be fine. But coming out through, down through here, these guys are fine until they get to this hex here. And, and that's when, if we zoom out a little bit, that's when, if you see that fire marker, all the way over there, there's a, a stack of chieftains and I've got something underneath here that's making this bounce. So let me just, that's a clip holding them up together. Let's see if we can just do this. I don't want to knock anything over. <clears throat> I've got the case on the camera, so it makes it a little heavier and makes the stand uh, unbalanced a bit. Okay, so we finally got a line of sight. This dude's moving and we could see him. And so we uh, elected to take a shot at him, even though it's extreme range. Uh, but, you know, it's not extreme range. So it's not extreme range for these particular chieftains. Because it's actually medium range. These guys have, you know, monster kick guys, 120 millimeter APFF, APFSDS guns that just are awesome. They also have hash rounds as well that come out of the same gun. But they're firing uh, KE, and we'll talk about that in a sec. And uh, they, they're coming in and we're going to see whether it's going to be a front shot or a hull side shot, depending on the die we roll. And they're going to take, they're going to take a shot at these guys. <clears throat> and they're actually shooting down because they're up on that, uh, if you look all the way over there, they're up on that uh, dark brown stuff over there. So here we go. Here's what's happened. Here's what's going to happen. Uh, 
we roll, we look at the table and we look at the to hit modifiers and all that sort of fun stuff, which is all right here. And we're going to look at the target size. That's not going to have any effect, but we, they are going to be moving. Uh, so that would be a minus two, but we will get a plus two for the, uh, the particular uh, sites, weapon sites that are being used at medium range. It's a plus two. And there's a NATO uh, uh, grade and weapon site. Sorry, there's the NATO target acquisition bonus. So that all nets out to a plus one, which means that on this table here at medium range, let me see if I get a pen and point this to you here. Medium range at a plus one. I'm going to need a 55 uh, to hit this uh, this unit, right? 55 or better. Is that right? Yes, 55 or better. Because uh, at, uh, at, at point blank range, I would need a, a 90 or less to hit it. Yes, a 90 or less to hit it, and basically uh, 100, this point blank range, you get all these modifiers, you get need zero. So 55, that's a tough shot, but it's not too bad. <clears throat> is, it, is it short range or is it medium range? You know, my, my correct, correction, it's actually short range. That's why, I was, that's why I was hesitating here, because that's not what I was rolling against earlier on. Uh, short range, 77, because it's 22 hexes away, not 23. If it had been 23 hexes, one further hex back, well, then we would have been at medium range. So I needed a 77 or less to hit, okay? We roll the 62. So that's why I was getting confused because that 62 was gonna mean we missed. And the last uh, 20 minutes of me getting organized to go through this this uh, little video would be have uh, would have been wasted. So the next thing you do then, if you're using all the optional rules and all the fun stuff, and I roll all these dice together, so I always use these two or try and use these two for the to hit. So we know we hit, something went clang, and we know that happened. So now it's a matter of what, what is, what's gonna happen next. So uh, after that, we wanna know what the to hit location is. And uh, we're going to uh, roll the die. And I rolled a seven, which is this die. And that means it's gonna be on the whole side front. There's a little AP hit locations table. And we're gonna do that. And we're gonna, we're gonna go for it from there, right? Now, the next thing that happens after that is we wanna make sure that if there's any uh, defensive uh, benefits from the armor, that we uh, take those into account. And we know that there's a whole side front. And we know that, uh, uh, is that right, whole side front? Is that what I just said? Front side, yep, whole side, that's right. So we're on the whole side here. And uh, <clears throat> we, we, we get this, this hit results here, and we can see that it's got this dark box around it, which means that it's got this uh, ERA capability, which is simply is just the, um, reactive armor stuff. I'm trying to look up the, uh, the rest of this here for you. The ERA, it comes in two types, either light or heavy. I may not be able to find it right now. Oh, this is all the way in the optional rules is where I am. Let's go over here. Yeah, so uh, the explosive reactive armor is what it's called. <clears throat> and it has, has a partial uh, value. And so the box is not full, fully uh, colored in like it is here. So it's, it means that we've got to roll a die to see if we are going to be successful with uh, the ERA, ERA either being active or, uh, or working or in place where the shell hit. And so we need to roll a seven or less, and we did do that, so we rolled a two. So that means we do go to the, the ERA armor table, uh, otherwise we'd be using this 19 for the, for the defense, but instead, because we have ERA, we are gonna be, uh, see that 19 is, uh, 20 is right here, right? See on the left here, it says 20. That's basically my defensive factor, right? 19, 20, near enough. So it's gonna be something, it's 100 or slightly less than 100. And if we need to do any further refining of that number, we can work out what that 
exact number is if we need to do that. So because I'm a nut job and I want to uh, make sure that I give all the benefits to the chieftain crew, uh, we're going to work out what their penetration, what their uh, incremental penetration might be. Note that if I roll a one, two, three, or four, my penetration uh, value is going to go down. And if I roll a, uh, a 10, 9, 8, or a 7, it's going to go up. A 5 or a 6, it's not, there's going to be no change. Well, my penetration, my current penetration on this uh, little sucker is uh, 101. Uh, and we can see that on this table here, right? So on, on the car, of offensive card, we can go to short range and we see the penetration rate is 101. And uh, there's your, uh, that's your ranges for, for the uh, particular ammunition type. And here's the ranges for the hash. If we had a fired hash, I would have had a lower penetration rate and I would have been firing at extreme range and I would have missed, right? Uh, there's times when you want to use that and there's uh, obviously times you don't. So we're going to look at the 101 and I rolled a, a nine and a five, right? And that nine and that five, I just look up the five, here it is, zero, right? And then I look at the nine, that's eight. So that means my penetration went up by eight. So I actually had a penetrating uh, value of 109 uh, going cumulative factors going into the, the tank on the hull side. And it makes big booming noises. And we have massive penetration because 109 is greater than 100, which is the defensive value that we looked at just a little while ago over here, this 100 here. So we know we got a penetrating hit. All right, fantastic. What sort of damage do we do? We roll the last die, it's a seven. We look on our chieftain and we see what sort of damage we're gonna do with the seven and we're gonna brew that sucker up. Note that if I had rolled, uh, if it had been using hash and I had it penetrated, I would have uh, also done a brew, caused a brew up, excuse me, there as well. So that is a bunch of dead stuff and that goes right there. And that is how you kill a T62 MV with a chieftain. Pretty sexy, huh? So the cool thing about this is you grab this handful of dice. I usually take uh, these two for the, for the, uh, for the to hit. I take uh, one for the, uh, the, the damage roll and I do one for the location. And then I do the gold one for the goofy uh, ERA and uh, CE and all that sort of fun stuff. And then if you do want to do variable damage, then you can use that as well, right? Roll, roll these two as well. So you just grab a handful of dice, roll them all out, and then you, you, you pull out the specific unit, the specific dice. So there, I roll a 57. I would get the ERA bonus. Get what that's for. <laughs> I rolled a zero for the for the damage. So right away, when I see that I rolled a zero, uh, sorry, a 10, that's gonna be a 10. So I know I'm gonna get a brew up if I get the penetration. And looks like I got a, a, a two, a five and a two. So the two, the five will be nothing. No change to the penetration rate. And a two would uh, look up on the little chart and we'd see what happened from there. And, uh, and this is gonna be the location, the 10 would mean that I was actually going to hit that sucker on the tracks. So that would end up being a damaging, uh, some sort of damage going on versus a, a brew up potentially. I think that's how that works. I'd have to check that. Anyway, there you have it. Thought I'd check in with you on BAOR and we'll keep playing here and see what the Soviets are going to do.